Hi everyone, I'm Soft Seaside and welcome to this new video. And guess what? It's a new We Would Ramble. Woo! Sorry for the long wait, lots of things happened at the same time. Starting my new full time job, moving places, and big news I got accepted into my very first artist alley in September. I was completely drowned in preparation, so I didn't have any time to work on my YouTube videos, but I had an amazing time and I will make a video about my convention experience. But now I also really want to continue the Reboot Ramble series. If you're new to this channel, we have this little series called Reboot Ramble, where I take you with me while I reboot my old webcomic AC New Insights. A comic slash manga that I started as a teenager in 2010 and drew for 12 years till 2022. If you want to know why I redo 12 years of work, here's a little playlist where you can watch all videos in one go. I highly recommend you doing so or you will be very confused with watching this one. Once again, this series is not a tutorial. I make these videos to hold myself accountable to work on the reboot and to show you my process and methods. I do some research of the topics but it's not a deep dive so don't take anything I say here as hard facts. I will link all my resources in the description and I highly recommend you doing your own research. You can also find the link to the old version there. With that being said, let's dive in. Today Today we will look at the world building of my old comic and approve it for the new version. Ah, here it is, the part of the series I was most afraid of. Don't get me wrong, world building is important. I love to discover the fantastical worlds that are portrayed in stories. Some people are so good at coming up with super interesting concepts, intelligent magic systems, diverse societies, believable cultures and magical worlds. I am just not one of them. I mostly focus on interpersonal relationships and I am a big fan of Slice of Life. Since the story takes place in the real world in a fictional city there is not so much actual world building required. However, my comic is still urban fantasy, so there are still concepts that we have to look at. One day I would like to make a fantasy comic in an actual fantasy world, but that's for another time. First let's look at the two types of world building, hard and soft world building. Hard world building is all about the rules. The world is thought through, there are clear established rules and structures, how everything works, the society, the political systems, the economics, the weather, whatever you name it. It's logical and well develop and for the reader slash consumer it's crystal clear how things work here. Mm -hmm. Soft world building in contrast is all about the vibes. The rules tend to bend, it's more about conveying a certain vibe. How does this magician use its magic? It doesn't matter as long as it works for the narrative and looks cool. The Ghibli movies are a great example for that. Things stay vague so you can interpret your own ideas in it. Mm -hmm. What world building type will I use? For my comic I guess it will be a mix of soft and hard world building. I'm not a person who loses themselves in creating a world, going into every detail. I want to focus on the things that are truly necessary for the plot and the vibe, at least for this project, but it's still supposed to make sense. For example, the old version takes place in Japan because I was a huge weeb and this comic was even drawn from right to left. Like I said in my previous video, I don't feel comfortable anymore to write a story set in Japan about Japanese characters because I am simply not Japanese. I tried my best to research, but I know that I made a lot of mistakes while drawing the old version and I'm very sorry for that. Therefore, the new comic will be placed in some unnamed European country which is basically Germany because I was born, raised and lived there but not quite Germany because I don't want it to be tied to actual history and events. The story is set in our current time and the cast will also be way more diverse because I'm part of many marginalized groups and my heart yearns for more representation. You would think since most of the story takes place in reality the magical world building shouldn't be so hard now but you would be fooled. I don't know. This world building thing is really hard for me. I can't tell what is too much planning for the fantasy part and what is too little. I realized by making these videos that I am just not the kind of storyteller who knows everything right from the start. I love to figure stuff out as I go. However, some things still need to be established to have a good foundation that I can work with later. It's important to come up with some basics and develop these basics. That's why this video took so long. It's because I can't decide on what to set as rule and what can stay vague. I have such a writer block. The last thing I want is to establish something and then write myself into a plot hole. But at the same time, there are so many things that I have to consider when creating a world for your story and I am overwhelmed. I guess the real goal for me is to learn to not be too perfectionist. That it's okay to have inconsistencies in your stories, especially if you're only one writer with no editor. It's okay. 
So let's look at the fantasy mm -hmm. part of the old version and then change it accordingly to the reboot. Like in a lot of other videos mentioned, there are lots of elements that are taken over from the newest chapter of the old version to the reboot version. It's because when I got older I actually tried to write a story that makes sense and I really like a lot of the new stuff. What is the world building in the old version? To summarize, there are ordinary humans and people mm -hmm. that look like humans but actually have supernatural powers. These people are called Sanchis and for this video I will keep using Using this term because saying people with supernatural powers every time is quite exhausting. Senshis have always lived among the humans but they hide the powers because in the past Senshis were hunted by humans because they feared them. Now only a few selected Senshis live among humans and humans don't know about the existence of them anymore. There are also secret organizations. One organization that is evil and wants to kill humankind and another organization that wants to save humankind and protect them. Monsters who can manipulate the memories of people and kill humans and an even more powerful species of people with supernatural powers. We will talk about all that later though. Let's talk about our magic users then. The Senshis. In the old version they are human-like entities that have supernatural powers and take up one third of the world population. I know, I know, we will talk about that later. <laughs> their powers are inherited by birth and usually manifest as a child. When they use their powers or if they feel strong emotions, their eyes start to glow red. Every senshi has some kind of tattoo on their back that will appear when their powers manifest. The tattoo will be on the left side of their back if they are part of an evil organization or on the right side if they are part of a good organization. When the senshi becomes stronger and the powers develop, the tattoo starts to grow which is a very painful process. Also, there will be usually at least one person in the world who has the same tattoo as you. People who share the same tattoos tend to harmonize them better and in private. It's literally so many tattoos. <laughs> there are also subgroups between the senshis, for example beasts, who can shapeshift into specific animals and elementals. Elementals are rare senshis who can control the power of nature. Every generation has just a few of them. Water, fire, lightning, wind and maybe earth. <laughs> in the old version we never reached the earth elemental and for some reason that never made it into the main story, wind elementals are extremely rare. Every few years the strongest elementals of a generation would be chosen to get magical weapons that would enhance their powers. That's basically everything there is to say about the old Senshi since a lot of the lore was purposely kept a secret for story reasons and will remain a secret in the reboot as well. There are some things that I really like and things that I really don't like about the old lore. First things first, I don't like the term Senshi. I just Google translated warrior into Japanese because in the old version everyone was specialized in fighting and the story took place in Japan. In the next version only a few selected would be trained to be fighters. I want to come up with a cool different name to call them. Maybe alterni, like alternative humans, but that sounds like humans are the norm and I don't like this at all. Preferably I would like to have something that is flower or plant themed, something like seeds or sprouts. I have no idea. Do you guys have an idea? Second point, I don't like the idea of powers being inherited anymore. Being born with powers is okay, but the inheritance part has weird implications that I really don't like. I do want to talk about racism in my story in some capacity because I think having powers should be included into the concept of intersectionality, but this is a very heavy topic that needs a lot of research to be handled sensitively and I don't know if I could or want to handle fantasy eugenics. I have some ideas about how senshis get their powers but I don't want to spoil it right now. And then there's the fact that senshis eyes glow when they use their powers or when they feel strong emotions. Okay, that's just a banger. Come on, this is top tier stuff. <laughs> I would definitely keep this. I will see if eye color stays red though. And before anyone asks, I got this idea of glowing eyes when feeling strong emotions without knowing that Kurapika in Hunter x Hunter has literally the same quirk. I started watching Hunter x Hunter in 2015, so years later after I started my comic but oh boy I love that trope and I love Kurapika and Hunter x Hunter and ah I also still like the concept of growing tattoos because magical tattoos are just super cool <laughs> but it's totally weird that the placement of the alignment determines where the tattoo would grow this was one of the things where I had to come up with a stupid explanation retroactively we never got to this explanation in the old version and I'm glad that I can finally get rid of it in the reboot having a growing tattoo is also very unpractical especially because the powers of a senshi manifest when you are a child and I don't know how you could explain your kids having tattoos at the age of seven. <laughs> 
Especially if you consider that the old version takes place in Japan, where tattoos aren't that socially accepted yet. We will see if I will keep it in the new version. And furthermore, in the old version, Senshis took meds to make the tattoos disappear and use painkillers if the tattoo grows. This was never shown in the comic because I came up with that idea pretty late. I don't know how logical that would be anyway, but I still really like the idea of tattoos in general. I will see if I keep the tattoos in the new version. However, if I should decide to keep it in, I will not make them so tattoos anymore. There was an explanation in the old version why there are multiple people with the same tattoos but the old comic didn't go long enough to talk about it and the explanation was also way too complicated. While it would be a very interesting conflict to have people who don't come along end up being partners and while in the old version that's the main reason why a lot of characters even met, I don't like the idea that this stuff could be used to legitimize abuse for example. Also good chemistry because of biological factors is kind of meh. I would rather develop the relationships and explore the interactions and personalities organically. By the way, the fact that one third of the whole world population were senshis in the old version is just crazy. That would mean that every third person you meet is freaking senshi. How the hell would they keep the society a secret when every third child has a tattoo and glowing red eyes? <laughs> in the reboot, only very, very, very few people will have powers. This also makes it easier for the senshis to live among humans. Ironically, almost the whole cast of main characters have powers and I also don't want to make them all powerless in the reboot so I have to come up with a reason of why they are all in one place. Yeah, the weird retroactively explanations even follow me in the reboot. <laughs> now talking about the subgroups, to be specific about the elementals with the special weapons, I will not include the weapons that enhance the power of elementals. I didn't do anything with that in the old version, I came up with some ideas to make a cool plot twist out of it, but it got way too complicated. I just added this because I love Digimon and I love magical weapons and I love giving people cool looking magical accessories, but don't worry, there still will be magical accessories. <laughs> in general, the old version wanted to be so many things. All the things I loved as a child and some of them even now. All the tropes I loved and all the media that I liked, but I learned that you sometimes have to cut stuff out and use your cool idea in another story. I will see if I will include elementals as a specific subgroup in the new version, but to be honest, if elementals would be so where it would even be crazier when so many main characters have elemental powers. Can you tell that I really like Avatar and Wings Club when I was younger? Specific named subgroups like beasts are really not necessary for the reboot and requires more world building that I want to avoid. Now I want to talk shortly about the magic slash power system. When I was younger I loved shown with cool action scenes and superpowers so I really wanted to draw one myself. However, as you probably have figured out, I struggle a lot with coming up with cool world building concepts and if you have read the old version you know that the action part was never the focus of the story. Also action scenes are so hard to draw but just like I said before I will still establish some things to have a solid foundation to work with. Even if my story focuses more on interpersonal relationship I don't want it to be solely styles of life and drama. I do like my fair bit of fantasy. <laughs> While in the old version powers were inherited by birth and didn't really have any drawbacks, I was thinking that the powers are distributed randomly in the reboot. I want to keep the origin of the powers a secret for now, you gotta read the comic to find out. <laughs> I want to include some limitations and rules to the powers in the reboot. Training your skills, physical and mental strength will help you grow your powers. The limitation of powers and the drawbacks depend on how skilled the person is with the powers and depending on the powers itself. Let's talk about snow for example, formerly called Yukiko in the old version. They can control water, their strength lies on ice though. Here are some ideas how their powers could be limited. Their body may be used to cold temperatures but they will still suffer hypothermia when going through extreme cold temperatures and if they use their powers too often. Also they struggle with creating steam since they are more skilled in creating ice. How do the powers exactly work and where is it coming from? Not entirely sure, but that's where the soft world building slash power system takes place. <laughs> you don't have to explain everything, it's okay. For the next part, I will have to give you a little lore history lesson of the old version. As I told you before, the senshi kind lived among humankind but were discriminated and killed. Cut very shortly, two fractions arise because of this. An evil organization that wants to kill humans because of their cruel actions and a good organization that wants to protect humankind. These two groups 
groups are in constant conflict with each other. Mm -hmm. However, one day a mysterious monster appears that can manipulate the memories of people. This monster modifies the human's memory so they can't remember anything about centuries anymore. Therefore, they can live peacefully among the humans again as long as they keep their powers a secret. The evil organization worships this memory monster for saving the centuries also because the monster also kills humans randomly. The good organization of course wants to get rid of this monster to protect the humans. Mm -hmm. These two fractions are in big conflict with each other once again until a mysterious man kills the monster. This man reveals himself to be a special and rare kind of senshi who is extremely powerful because of his royalty calling himself a Hana. Translates into flower in Google Translate Japanese. <laughs> I'm so sorry for all the Japanese terms. This super legendary flower senshi joins the good organization to protect humanity. More of these flower senshis reveal their identity and join either the evil or the good organization to lend them their strength. Everything was at peace for a while until all the royal flower senshis were completely eradicated during a tragic incident. An old proficiency foretold that a new royal flower senshi will be born. This flower will be so powerful that whoever teams up with them has the power to save or destroy humankind. You got all of this? Good, because we started right there. First of all, let's talk about the monsters. In AC New Insights, there are monsters that can manipulate the memories of people, erasing, changing, replacing memories. The monsters came in different rankings depending on how powerful they are, just like in Shonen. The origin of the monsters is unknown, but it is common knowledge that the evil organization tried to artificially recreate the OG monster that saved Senshi kind back then. Humans are not able to see them, only Senshi's were. As you can probably tell, I was a huge fan of Bleach. <laughs> Let's talk about the things that I actually like about them. I think the idea of monsters manipulating the memories of people is really cool. I think it's very original and I haven't seen it anywhere yet. I also really like my secret explanation of their origin. However, I didn't know what their limits and powers exactly were beyond the memory manipulation. I didn't know how they really work biologically speaking and very important, I didn't really use them at all. I really love shown anime and I really wanted my own version of it and that's why there are monsters in my old story but since my focus shifted to my characters, I really didn't use them anymore. I always planned to have a big reveal about them though. And here comes the actual reason why this video took forever. I was discussing with myself for months if I should even include the monsters in the reboot again. On the one hand, I really like the idea of a memory manipulation and I felt like if I completely scrap the monsters, how is my story any different than all the other fantasy stories? If you have read the old version, you know that the monsters have some importance in the very beginning, then never come back until they are part of an extremely important plot twist. Of course, I could rewrite the plot twist somehow, so I wouldn't need the monsters monsters anymore, but I feel like it is such a cop out. I don't want them to be useless again, but if I give them more involvement in the story, I have to rewrite a lot and I also don't really want to focus on the monsters. And most importantly, I don't want to give them the power to erase memories anymore. My story focuses so much on my characters and their development and I don't want them to magically have amnesia. Real life amnesia is really tragic and there are so many aspects that would be really interesting in a story to tell about. Who am I without my memories? Am I still the same person as I was before? How do I cope with memory loss? How do I deal with people who have memory loss? Is losing a bad experience a good memory loss? Are fake memories as valid as real ones? I think these topics are really really interesting but that's just not what I want my comic to be anymore. This comic has so many topics already that all need their care and their time to be explored and I really don't want to put another heavy topic into the mix. But entirely scrapping off the monsters also means that I have to focus more on the conflicts between the organizations which is kind of what I want but I feel like the vibe will be a lot different. So in conclusion, I think I want to still have them in the story, but they will not cause memory erasure anymore. I would definitely make them very rare, maybe they will be used as a big plot reveal very late in the story, which spoiler a lot I guess, <laughs> sorry. If they are part of the story, they will not be that important anymore and I will focus on the conflicts of the people and fractions more, but we will talk about this later in this video. I'm still not sure, maybe I will scrap them later on, who knows. But should I include them? I already have some really cool ideas for the designs because the old designs suck and I really want to give the story a flower slash plant theme. I would love to make them kind of rude looking like old dying plants. I'm not good at creature designs but it's definitely something I want to learn. Okay let's talk about the organizations that I mentioned a few times already. As you can imagine Teenage Me 
had a strong black and white understanding. So they were clearly evil and were obviously good guys. Like I called the organizations for Google translation Japanese equivalent of the insane people and the thinking people. In the old version the good organization saw the duty in protecting humans from the evil organization and fight the memory monsters. Because of the monsters and the high stakes in the old version with the whole we have to find the last Hana or humanity will be destroyed, everyone had to be skilled in fighting. The organization is heavily involved in the political systems of the humans and they want to coexist with each other. Almost everyone of the main cast was part of the good organization. The evil organization in contrast wanted to kill humankind for their cruel actions in the past. This evil organization was rumored to do human and senshi experiments and to artificially create the original memory monster. They also had a better logo. They only shortly came up in the old version. I always wanted to show the nuances and morals. In the later story I implied that the good organization is not as good as everyone thinks it is and that the evil organization is not as evil as, as it seems. For example, the good organization had a rule that every human that learned about the existence of senshis has to be killed. Uh, that doesn't sound really human protection organization like. <laughs> I also hinted on some corruption in the old version within the good organization. In addition to that, I had some ideas to make some individual people of the evil organization sympathetic and actually good people. Just kinda hard to balance since the evil organization literally experimented on people. <laughs> I mentioned this in another reboot drama, but I really hate the idea to divide the supernatural people into a good and evil organization. People are complex and while of course some actions are not redeemable, I like to think that morals are very nuanced. I was thinking that the people with supernatural powers are organized in one big organization for the reboot and then there is a handful of people who disagree with the structures and methods. Some of them could rebel against the organization and some of them might be extremists. I think this is a better solution instead of pure good and evil. The new organization still wants to protect humanity from the monsters and want to coexist with humans secretly. I have some ideas about the loose structures of the organization but this will be explored more in the comic itself. I also really don't want them to be all fighters anymore. I don't think it makes a lot of sense and since I want to make the monsters very rare or even scrap them, there is also no need for it anymore. In the new version there would be like some elite fighters specialized in battle. I was thinking that it could be men mandatory to be part of organization when you have powers or that it could just be extremely beneficial or extremely discriminating not being part of it and that this is the reason why so many join. I also really want to explore the character's relationship with the organization itself more because in the old version they kind of blindly followed the orders of the good organization. As the story progressed the characters were questioning the organization's legitimacy but since it only happened in the newer chapters I don't know if people picked up on it. And about the Hana the powerful rare kind of senshi who are royal, you will see if they will come back in the story. <laughs> I will not spoil this to you. And these were the main world building elements in the old comic version, changed for the new version. I realized that by changing the world building for the new version, the story is also affected by that and therefore I also have to make changes to the outline. I guess that's normal when you don't set everything in stone right from the beginning. Everything is still pretty loose and maybe that's a good thing and maybe that's a bad thing. We will see how it works. It's also really important to learn from other stories. I was thinking about similar stories to mine and then I realized that the classic people with supernatural powers live among us and try to keep the powers a secret plot is not so common in present media anymore. At least I couldn't think of any stories that have these plot lines that are not from the 2000s and don't involve famous mythical creatures or superheroes. I don't know, maybe it's just because I don't consume so much media lately. Do you have good recommendations with a specific plot line? Specific specifically asking for urban fantasy where magic is not normalized and is still a secret. I'd like to check out some. Could be anything. I can't promise that I will check it out immediately because it's hard for me to consume new media but I will try my best. That's it for now. You want a cool story with excellent world building, intelligent power systems and a cool lore? Well, that's not my story. <laughs> but I can give you an emotional, dramatic story drawn with a lot of love, passion and thought about a cast of deep characters which just happens to have some fantasy action scenes. <laughs> so please look forward to it. Oh man, we finally did it. This video took forever. The next reboot ramble video will hopefully finally be the start of a character redesign. If you follow me on social media, you 
you may have seen some snippets of the new designs already. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like or subscribing to see more. See you in the next video. Bye.